it's Rob! Tony! We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello inmates and welcome back to the NM Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. And it's been some time since we've done our uh, most popular deck video going over the most popular decks found in each class and kind of how that deck runs and uh, what to expect from it when playing against it on ladder. Um, I'm going to try to pump out one of these videos at the beginning of each month as you guys have recommended uh, me to do so in the comment section, so I'll try to keep that uh, a promise. So, like I said, uh, we're going to talk about each class is the most popular decks currently, so make sure when you watch this video, if you watch it from a year from now and you leave like, oh, these aren't popular decks, please just keep in mind when this video was posted um, in relation to when you're watching it. So our first uh, class we're gonna go over is Rogue, and um, there's not many decks that Rogue is currently have in their like kind of kit. Uh, Miracle and some sort of like Tempo Rogue, but I wouldn't really say that Tempo Rogue is the most popular. I would say definitely the Miracle at the moment. If you play against Rogue, you know, I would say 80 or 90% of the time it's going to be the Miracle variant of this. You know, there is the Nazoth variant and there is this Tempo, but those aren't very popular in comparison to how many people are running the Miracle Rogue. So also let me just say that when I say the most popular decks granted there is a massive amount of decks on ladder right there's going to be every sort of deck on ladder that people are playing but we're only going to cover the most popular ones that you're going to see most of the time on ladder not every deck just the most popular ones so the miracle rogue basically uses the um, Gadgeton Auctioneer as a draw mechanic with their cheap cycle cards such as the Cold Blood Preps, Backstab, Daily Poison, Zvis to pump out large quantities of damage over the course of maybe one to two turns if they can set up um, a nice combo piece and then they use the Conceal to hide the Auctioneer so you can't actually kill it allowing them to continuously uh, generate value through casting cards the next turn because uh, the Gadgeton Auctioneer does cost six mana so when they play the Gadgeton Auctioneer if they don't have a Prep or a Backstab or a Cold Blood um, in in combination with him it, they're not going to be able to cast all the spells they want so that's where the cold blood or the conceal comes in to kind of hide the auctioneer so they can survive that uh, or it sh can survive that extra turn so they can combo it out later the questing adventure is a little bit interesting it's been a recent addition to the miracle rogue as it works well with the conceal and the amount of cards you cast in one turn so it's similar to the van cleef i wouldn't say it's as good but let's say you don't rip the van cleef and you have like questing adventure and a bunch of cheap spells and you can't seem to draw an auctioneer uh buffing up questing adventure with conceal and just going for the the OTK with that is just as powerful as maybe making a giant fan cleave and concealing it. So, uh, there's a besides that, the deck basically runs the same as it's always since the uh, kind of the release of standard mode. Uh, that is the only <laughs> popular rogue deck at the moment. Like I said, there's not a whole lot. I didn't want to put the tempo rogue in there as it's not a popular deck right now. It's definitely not refined, and there's not that many people playing it. So, the next one's going to be Hunter, and that's going to be the mid range Hunter. Um, for this particular deck, again, there is some variant of like a hybrid. Uh, hunter running around it's not yet you know with the new cards coming out like kindly grandmother and some other uh beast cards there's not it's not as popular yet guys when the deck gets refined in the next month or two i'm sure there'll be more hunter decks that are um out in the meta but currently you're mainly going to see this mid-range variant uh basically plays the same way as we've seen the mid-range hunter the hunter doesn't have a lot of kind of variety within the decks they basically uh play minions on curve they go face a lot, and then they can burst you down with Call of the Wild, and then they have this Savannah High Main for a really good mid uh, uh, mid kind of uh, creature there. If a Savannah High Main sticks, they basically win. If you can deal with it, or a Hex or a Polymorph, they normally you know have really uh, hard time getting back from that, but that's where the Call of the Wild comes in. The new Doctor 8 is what they call it, or what we call it. And then also the deck or the actual deck list guides are my, are my list. Uh, the dust is down here in the corner. So for those of you who are wondering um, how much the deck costs, again, the deck list and the dust is in the bottom right. Uh, along with that, if you have any problems with the deck list or you want to make changes, feel free to. These again are my lists. I didn't. These are mine. So personal opinion on the deck list, but the four, like the foundation of the decks, will be the same um, moving forward. Like. The foundation of a of a mid range hunter will will hold the you know double call of the wild double savannah, double savannah high main. But let's say you don't like the tundra reiner or two infested wolf. Those are interchangeable, but the core of the deck is still there, which is you know call of the wild savannah high main um, and that sort of stuff. So. 
Uh, moving to the Warrior, which we actually have a ton of decks in the Warrior uh, currently. This is uh, definitely my favorite class, and it's good to see a lot of variants in here. So the first one we're going to cover is the Control Warrior. It, again, hasn't changed too much over the course of its lifetime. Um, due to the fact that we did lose uh, Shield Mains and things of that nature, we've had to make a few slight modifications to the deck. Um, as you can see, this deck is a little weird, right? Uh, this is the deck that I actually hit Legend with this season, and um, it did very, very well for me overall I think it had like a 65 or 75 or 60 5 to 70 percent win ratio over the course of me playing it. Haven't done the deck guide on it yet, but you can expect that soon. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously the Tink Master is a little weird. I found that there was a lot of Cthulhu decks on ladder, so uh, due to the fact that Warriors have no Transform or Polymorph card, um, dealing with Cthulhu and the only way to deal with it is some uh, Windrunner, Sylvanas. So. Um, they kind of just wait for you to use Sylvanas or you just don't draw into your Shield Slam Sylvanas to take their Cthulhu or you just don't want to use that method. I found that in this particular deck, let's say you're going against a Cthulhu, I know this is a little specific, but I just figure I'll explain my Tink Master <laughs> why the hell it's in here, right? Um, so you play Sylvanas against a Cthulhu deck, they're like, wow, this guy's an idiot, he just played Sylvanas against me and that's his only way to take the Cthulhu because now Cthulhu can die and then you can brand into the uh, Doom, which will create two more Cthulhu's in the deck, but... So you play Sylvanas, it kind of baits out their Cthulhu the following turn, and then you follow up with your Tank Master, transform Cthulhu into a 5-5, which is still smaller than whatever their Cthulhu is, or you change it into a 1-1 Squirrel, and they can no longer bring Cthulhu back, and at that point in time, um, like 50% of the Cthulhu decks that we played against, they just concede because they that is their win condition of the deck, and they just played Cthulhu, and they can't even bring him back to life, so... Um, that's why he's in there, and uh, besides that, everything else is pretty standard. Uh, moving to the next one, this would be the Cthulhu Warrior deck. Um, runs, again, very similar to the Control Warrior. Um, because of how much uh, aggro is currently on ladder, we have the double crazed worshipper. Um, there's a lot of early game removal. I've added a bash. There's definitely the double slams. Um, but besides that, runs very similar to the control warrior in respects to saving your, you know, your hard removal for giant creatures, using your brawl when the field gets too big. Definitely still have two brawls in this deck. I've seen a lot of people cut down to one brawl. But it's just a card. Like, let's say you go against... Um, like another control matchup, if you brawl even like when they, let's say, twin Vecklor and they have another creature down, you're it, you, most of the time you're killing at least two creatures with brawl. So using brawl in the control matchup when they have three creatures is fine, but some people are like, oh, it's an automatic loss if you have two brawls. It's not really because most of the time you're at least going to go one for one with brawl, right? So if they have two big minions and you brawl, you're killing at least one, which is basically a hard removal for one creature. And because you don't have to kill two right away because you have armor, it doesn't really matter about removing both of them just so much as mitigating the damage over the course of a couple turns um, versus just l instantly losing if you don't have brawl if you're going against like let's say a zoo deck so there's merit to having two brawls there is merit to one but I find that the card is just too good why would you not play a good card so uh, that kind of goes with the Cthune Warrior again the main win condition is playing Cthune and then using your uh, Doom Caller and Bran in combination with Emperor so I kind of didn't go over that so we'll go over it real quick so the point of this deck if you're playing against let's say another control deck you want to have the at least Doom Caller or the Bran Bronze Beard in your hand and then from there you're going to play Emperor Emperor is going to reduce Bran down to 2 or Doom down to 7 which means you can play both of them in the same turn which means if your Cthune has died you're going to actually be able to bring back two Cthunes and give them plus 4 or plus four um, and that'll basically guarantee the win in that particular control matchup because you're playing two Cthunes um, plus your original one which is way too much for most decks to handle uh, moving on to the next warrior deck we have the OTK Worgen deck um, I wouldn't say this is as popular as the dragon tempo which we're going to go over or maybe the control one but it's still a deck that um is seen a lot on ladder in comparison to again some other warrior decks like there's some otk patron warrior running around but i would have to say this is a lot more popular than that as this deck is very very cheap to make uh works well against a lot of different decks and can reach legend and it you know 1600 dust that's not a whole lot of dust in comparison to what this deck can do for you so the basis of this deck is to cycle 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 draw as much as possible while holding um, the opponent off with using cards such as Wild, Py Wild Pyromancer, Commanding Shout, uh, Battle Rage, Blood Ike, or Inner Rages. Um, maybe one Inner Rage, you don't want to use two because that's kind of your win condition combo, but the Wild Pyromancer allows you to kind of clear the board. Uh, the Shield Blocks, again, Armor to Cycle, and then from there you want to draw into the Raging Worgen 
faceless manipulator, uh, your rampage, your charge, and your inner rage. And then from there, uh, you play Emperor Tharzan, it discounts all of them. Then you play Ravaging Ghoul, you inner rage, you rampage, you charge it, you faceless manipulator it, and then you can deal up to, I think the max you can do is 54 damage in one turn um, because you get uh, each, uh, I think, warg into 12. 58 damage it might be I don't know it's anywhere between 52 to 58 somewhere in there so depending on how many of course inner rages you have which is very important and how much you've discounted obviously because you haven't discounted everything maybe you can't play all the um, cards you need to uh, kind of buff up your raging worgen and then some of you may be asking why are you only running one worgen and one charge and one rampage uh, the reason being is there's so much cycle in the deck you're most likely going to be able to outdraw your opponent two to one if not three to one and um having two wargans in your hand is a just a it, it's just a dry card you, you you only need one for the combat to work because you're using faceless manipulator for the to be able to copy the stats of the one you've originally placed so there's only need for one here uh heading into the last deck which is definitely the most popular of all the warrior decks currently on ladder if not the most popular deck period and it is the strongest deck currently in the meta um so we've seen and so the tournaments have held out this is like the most banned class ever currently well the uh, most banned time of warrior ever so we have the dragon tempo warrior what makes this deck deck so strong is the fact that it can curve out extremely well so you have a very strong turn to play alex draws his champion fairy dragon they're very really hard to remove especially if you got a three three charge or just a three two that can't be targeted and you're following it up with a frothing berserker which is a two four that if not removed immediately it can just win you the game right there because of how powerful it is. And then on turn four, you have a three six with taunt or a four three with charge, pushing even more damage, followed by a card draw or a, the ability to deal three damage to a particular creature, followed by if they're already at 15 health, you can summon a six drop nine nine, which is huge. So they spend their removal dealing with the six drop nine nine, they're not developing the board. And then you follow up with a Malkarok, Hellscream, uh, Malkarok, uh, Hellscream, Rag, or a Deathwing. And it's just like this deck is just putting on so much pressure for the entire game that your opponent really doesn't get to develop anything they're taking a sizable amount of damage and then you just finish off with you know high quality cards such as again Gromash, uh, Gromash uh, Rag or a Deathwing in response to being able to remove cards with Blood Icor Execute and using Sir Finley as a uh, ability to get the uh, different hero power because using armor in this particular deck uh, with the build doesn't really make much sense because you're definitely trying to be more aggressive. So uh, the mage hero power really works well in this deck uh, due to the fact that uh, it's a combo it's a combo activator for Hell Scream, Execute, and things of that nature. So really good deck and uh, pretty pretty easy to play and it's you know it's a little bit expensive right um, but for how powerful it is it's it's definitely a good one uh, moving to the mage there's only one really mage deck that sticks out to me so when you play against the mage you kind of think all right well it's most likely going to be tempo mage it could be freeze mage but we're not going to cover that because again it's not that popular due to how popular warrior is right now on ladder so there's no point to play a freeze mage when half the ladder is warrior and the warrior's hero powers gain armor and there's one thing that beats freeze mage and that's armor so as freeze mage is a deck that mages you know they play semi often it's not nowhere near as popular as the the current tempo mage so this deck Basically uses a lot of cheap spells in combination with cheap minions to be able to gain huge tempo advantages. It has cards like Flame Waker in it, which allow it to do two extra damage for every spell you cast. And as we can see, we have Arcane Blast, Arcane Missiles, Mirror Image, Frost Bolts, you know, Arcane Intellect, Forgotten Torch, Fireballs, <laughs> Tome. And it's just it, it's an insane amount of spells. And then let's say you just can't gain enough tempo through the cards such as Flame Waker, Water Elemental in combination with spells. You've got the cards like Yog saron to finish up the game if you just it's not going in your direction but for the most part games will be finished by turn i want to say seven ish with this deck as soon as you cast that firelands portal you probably have a sizable board you most likely have some burn in hand and have already used some burn on them along with dealing a sizable amount of damage due to the fact that the flame waker the mana worms all this stuff does damage over the course of time and only gets stronger every turn you have it out um so there's like not really a limit on how much value Sorcerer's Apprentice, Mana Worm, and cards like that can give you. Uh, like Azur Drake 
it, even the spell power is helpful but like let's say once you play the faceless summoner that's it right you use you've used the cards battle cry and you've obtained what it can give you but cards like cult sorcerer sorcerer's apprentice being able to deal one extra spell power per turn or reducing the mana cost per turn every single turn is just if you if they stick on the field every turn you're just getting farther and farther ahead so it's just a really powerful deck right now definitely something to look out for uh doesn't cost that much 3400 um the only really legendary in the deck is yog and besides that there's just some rares and epics so definitely a solid deck to build if you're looking to build a really good mage deck right now again freeze mage is okay but just not in this current meta so i would not count it as like one of the most popular decks in a deck you should uh, be looking out to play uh for warlock we've got two decks i'm sure you can uh, imagine the first one here uh actually the second one the first one's going to be the reno variant the Cthune reno variant to be uh precise the nazoth variant is good but i find the Cthune one to be a little more prominent on ladder and um what people tend to be swaying to when they play the Warlock deck due to the fact that you can cycle into uh, Cthune and the Cthune buffers very, very quickly. It also has kind of the feel, um, it also runs Reno Jackson, right? So you have the feel of being able to extend far and let's say a, a rush deck takes you down to a really low life total, you just Reno back up and before you would depend your late game on Lord Draxus, but now there's actually a better late game and that's Cthune. And if they, you know, Cthune doesn't do it, Lord Draxus will because you still have them in the deck. So there's multiple win conditions with this deck with being able to have the ability to heal back up to full if you can draw reno and because you're playing warlock and you can slap yourself in the face every turn for two um and, or take two damage and draw a card it's really really nice and the reason i say that is because there is a funny animation where a gul'dan would slap himself take two damage and draw a card which is hilarious so um but besides that the deck plays just like any other reno deck you have uh, a one of in uh, all the cards besides Twilight Drake. So um, I haven't actually posted my Reno Cthune deck yet. It's still just waiting to be uh, published. So that'll be with up within the next couple days. Uh, but I explained in that video why I have two Twilight Drakes in here. Uh, but you can obviously take one out and replace it with something else. But I found two Twilight Drakes, even though it's a Reno deck, works really, really well. And again, in that other video, I explain it very much in detail why there's two, because that seems very silly of me in a Reno deck, but there's actually a really solid purpose. But I'm not going to explain it here as that would take way too long but if you want to watch that video even if it's up i'll put the annotation if it's not then it'll be on our channel under deck guides or deck testings heading to the next deck we know this one oh too well guys i don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon whether or not it's still a tier one or top tier two deck i don't know all depends on the meta but for for the past couple months it has been definitely in that top tier section and that is going to be the zoo warlock Nothing's changed about this deck whatsoever other than the fact that it's actually gotten stronger as we've moved forward, such as cards like Darkshire Councilman, Forbidden Ritual. Uh, now we have the things like Silver War Golem where it makes it even harder to come back from if they're able to discard that early in the game with cards such as Soulfire. Again, this is my current build of the Zoo Warlock deck. Some of you are some on ladder probably don't run the Silver War Golems in the um, double Soulfire, but I found that it works out really well because in the early game you can, let's say, dump your hand, you Soul fire something there's only one or two cards left in your hand one of their silverware golems not only did you spend one mana to deal four damage you also summoned a three three and by then your opponent gets blown out and you have a low hand but that doesn't matter because you can again slap yourself in the face take two damage and draw a card so um the good stuff there and obviously the double doom guard in combination with the silverware golem instead of the sea giants because of we're uh, running the with the golems so Moving into the next class, the Paladin. Uh, again, we've got two decks here, but I actually made an interesting deck where I combined both these decks together, and it works really, 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 really well. Uh, but for starters, uh, the Nazoth Paladin deck, I need to take a sip of water here, guys. Uh, my throat's killing me. <sighs> okay. So the Nazoth Paladin deck, again, a deck that's been around since basically standard format rolled around and Nazoth has come out. Um, this deck uses the early game, so the early game minions such as Doomsayer, Equality, Consecration, True Silver Champion, Aldor the Peacekeeper, and things of that nature to survive until the late game. They have draw mechanics such as the Solemn Vigil and the Alkali of Pain along with the Loot Hoarders. Uh, from there, they're going to be able to play cards like Bloodhoof and Sylvanas, which have really, really strong death rattles. Uh, once those cards die, along with Tyrion, you're able to bring those cards back with Nazoth. And if you can just say, let's say, bring back one Sylvanas or just a Tyrion, that's enough value in itself to win a game because dealing with two Tyrians that's two five three weapons that deal dealt 15 damage each and in combination that's 30 damage over the course of six turns if you're attacking once every turn uh, with the Ashbringer so 
even just bringing back one of these powerful powerful death rattles is worth it with Nazoth. And the deck is just stacked with powerful creatures. And then the Ivory Knight also gives you the ability to heal back up and then pick another um, very powerful Paladin card if you're looking for. A lot of decks play two Ivory Knights, but I find the two Ivory Knight combination works better in the Murloc Paladin, which is our next deck, uh, because you're able to have a higher chance of getting another Anything Can Happen, and three Anything Can Happen is basically an automatic win versus any control deck. So I find that a little bit better in that particular deck. One Ivory Knight, though, is not bad as it is just a solid body. It's a heal, and it allows you to pick a card based on the situation you're currently in. So that's why there's only one Ivory Knight instead of the normal two. Uh, the Barnes is really nice because if you pull out Sylvanas, Tyrion, or the uh, Karen, it's going to add an additional card to what Nazoth brings back, um, and it'll come back with normal stats, not the 1-1 one -one stats, so that's really nice as well, um, but I'm sure you guys know this deck as it's been around quite a while, and it's only, it's it, I would have to say it's not as popular, but it's still a definitely, if you play a Paladin, it, you're either playing against to, there's there's an aggro paladin running around with Moros, right? But the deck is unrefined and it's very kind of swingy. And I wouldn't really say when you're playing against a paladin at on ladder or at a high rank that it's going to be anything other than one of these two controls. Uh, so the next one's going to be the Murloc Paladin, which we've seen a lot in tournaments. I would have to say a lot more um, than the Nazoth Paladin, as I think it's a little bit more consistent because you can depend on the anything that can happen to close out almost every control game. Um, as if you're playing the Nazoth variant and they hold their, let's say, uh, large field removal for when you play Tyr or when you play Nazoth, after Nazoth, you don't really have anything, but with the Anyfin, you actually kill them in the same turn you play the card instead of having to kill them the turn after, because with Nazoth, you're not summoning anything with charge, but with anything can happen, you're actually summoning creatures with charge that can win right there on the spot. You're not waiting for your opponent to react to what you've done. You've, you've already reacted and you've already won. So... Um, like I've mentioned, the deck uses anything that can happen to deal a large quantity of damage very, very quickly. Um, there's no Murloc Knight in here. There's always that comment of, hey, why don't you have Murloc Knight? He's a great Murloc. As Murloc Knight is a great Murloc, he does not have charge, and he does not buff other Murlocs. He's great in the value game because you can just keep using your hero power to summon Murlocs, but he actually doesn't do anything to help the one-turn kill combo, which is what this deck is trying to accomplish. This deck still runs the Tyrion as it's a, you know, a very powerful Paladin card. It still runs Rag, the Light Lord as it's a very it's a great heal as you can see there's two ivory knights because you know getting that third anything can happen is huge the heal is nice uh it has a little i think a little bit more draw in the deck because the quicker you can draw into your murlocs because there's only four of them in the deck uh the faster you can play anything and the faster you play anything the, fa the faster you play anything the faster you win the game um so what i've done and a deck guy that should be coming out to you guys shortly, I've actually combined the Nazoth Paladin with the Murloc Paladin to make it a Nazoth Murloc Paladin. And not only do you have the win condition with anything, you have the win condition with Nazoth. So not only does your opponent have to deal with you summoning back Death Rattles, they also have to deal with this Murlocs. And it's just, in my opinion, very, very powerful. Granted, you do run one more 10 drop, which kind of ruins the curve if you happen to draw them really early in the game. Um... But most of the time, you're able to not, you know, not have that bad of luck, unless you're me, and then you draw them all the time. But we're still able to pull off wins, because the deck is good. So anyway, moving to the next class, we have Shaman. This would be the... I, no, this is the mid-range variant because it has a Thunder Bluff and Fire Elemental. So there's two variants of Shaman right now on ladder. There's the mid-range and the aggressive Shaman. There is a, the Evolve Shaman. Again, there's a lot of other versions and archetypes out there. It's just what is the most popular aggro and uh, mid-range are the most popular right now. As you can see, this deck does not run the double Doom Hammer. Um, it has more of a late game curve to it as it goes up to Windlord, which is an eight drop. Uh, the uh, face one, which we'll cover in a second, the highest drop in it is Thing From Below. But as we know, as you use the hero power with the Shaman, the Thing From Below becomes cheaper and cheaper. And most of the time, they're able to cast it for, what, one or two mana, which is absolutely ridiculous. And what makes this deck oh so strong. Um, but the mid-range variant... It's not you don't really play this much different than the faced variant You still have a lot of the early game cards such as the faceless the Tuscar totemic the tunnel trogs the totem golems It's just you're able to sustain a lot of pressure over the course of the mid to late game with the cards such as fire elemental thunder thunder bluff and uh, Windlord. But basically plays the same uh, this is the uh, faced variant of the deck. It has the double doom hammer in combination with rock biter is going to be a lot of your wins most of the time. You also have the uh, lava burst, unlike the mid range, because the lava burst is again more burst to face. Um, this runs one horse rider, argent horse rider, as the mid range does not. This also does not have the thunder bluffs, as you don't need 
Like Thunder Bluff is just too slow, right? It takes you most of the time you played on turn seven, you hear a power, you have two totems down, you make some trades. And this deck, it's just go face most of the time, unless there's a really obvious trade uh, that you should make or you're setting up for a lethal the next turn and you need a creature to die so you know another creature will live. It all depends on the situation, but the deck is so strong right now in combination, whether you're just talking about the Doom Hammer, the four drop seven seven, the thing from below, or the amount of burst damage you can do with lava burst, lightning bolts, and rock biters, it's just insane. So and totem golems, just like the the deck is crazy, and Shaman will remain a tier one class with decks like this until the next rotation, at which Shaman is losing a lot, and the only shaman I think we're gonna see is maybe like a control shaman variant, but even that might be too much because that still runs some of these cards. So uh, I believe that, no, we still have Druid. Um, so let's head into the Druid as we've talked about both the most popular Shamans. Um, so these are the last two decks. Uh, this one's going to be the Yogg slash Token Druid, uh, which is very, very, very popular in tournaments right now, along with Ladder. Most of the time when you play against a Druid, it is this deck you're playing against, or maybe slightly one or two cards off. But it's basically this. It combos... Cards such as Power of the Wild, Fandral, Violet Teacher, um, and Savage Roar, Living Roots, all of these just work so well together to continuously build up a sizable board and um, either buff them or be able to burst people out with the Savage Roar, um, or they use Wisp of the Old Gods to buff or create the minions. It's just an insane deck uh, if played correctly and, again, just uses combo it ramps at the beginning with such such as cards like Meyer Keeper Innervate uh, Wild Growth and it just has these power turns with Violet Teacher like I said Fandral um, Wisp of the Old Gods and just powers through and um, if you happen to like let's say a warrior uses Brawl uh, the, the next turn they just follow up with another huge combo turn and refill their fields you're always having to deal with this huge field because you're scared of them having a Savage Roar because that's you know 15 20 plus damage in one turn and then you have cards like anixia to refill back up the board again you've got cards like rag and ancient of orb uh, that are just sizable minions so you're having to you know not only deal with large boards you're having to deal with large individual creatures and then if all that just doesn't seem to be enough to kill your opponent, you follow up with the Yogg-Saron because half the deck is, you know, spells. <laughs> and then you just pray to the gods and he'll most of the time win you the game from what we've seen in the past and from the tournaments. So, uh, very, very powerful deck right now. Um, very interesting. There's a lot of different kind of ways to play this deck. And there's a lot of individual decisions per each turn that you can, you know kind of set the president for the following turns um so it's a very interesting high in my opinion a pretty high uh, skill deck um some of the turns you know are pretty broke back because it's kind of obvious what to play but a lot of those um what makes like a good player and a bad player from this deck is the positions when you're going against maybe an aggro shaman and it's kind of just like all right what can i extend and kind of hope to stop his damage for now but still have enough you know oomph in the late game to be able to finish him off so i mean definitely an interesting deck and uh, it takes a certain uh, st play style to do well with it and our last deck is the beast druid um, not that this deck is the most powerful deck on ladder by any means. It's it's good, but it's not the most powerful. It's just really popular right now um, due to the fact that the uh, Warden just came out, the 6-drop 5-5 five, five, copy of Friendly Beast. So it's maybe, like I said, not the most powerful deck, um, but I found this build to be pretty powerful considering I uh, climbed, you know, I think 1,200 Legend ranks with it in less than two hours. But either way, um, very kind of straightforward deck. I don't know what much more to say about it it's the beast druid and it's probably you're either going against the yog token or you're going against some guy trying out his beast druid i'm sure in a month or two if this deck isn't that powerful or proves to be not as good as the yog druid or doesn't have the potential to be as good as some of the other decks it will die out but right now pretty popular so with that hopefully you've enjoyed our most popular decks and um if i miss something or um there's something you, you'd like to add to any of these segments that we talked about feel free to leave so leave that in the comment section below as i really enjoy uh, looking forward to see what you guys have to say about this. This is one of the longer videos where I talk a lot, but hopefully it wasn't too much and you've been able to bear, th uh, bear through it just like my voice, which is slowly dying. So as always, guys, thanks for stopping by the end. Of course, I'm Warshak and happy whatever the hell day it is.